For centuries, Russia has hidden its dark side behind a facade of romantic myths. Myths that paint it as a victim, a liberator, a misunderstood missioner. But what if the truth is simpler? Join us today as we deconstruct the five biggest lies about Russia and expose the ugly truth hidden beneath. This is Matryoshka of Lies, an intro. I'm Maxim Eristavi, a journalist and author of the award-winning Russian Colonialism 101 guidebook. I spent years researching and explaining Russian serial behavior of colonial abuse. Now, together with the legacy Ukrainian newsroom Ukrainska Pravda, we'll take you on an eye-opening journey to unveil the empire that has been hidden in plain sight for way too long. Russia has for weeks been massing troops and tanks along the Ukrainian border. At the same time, Moscow is demanding an end to NATO enlargement. If Ukraine joins NATO, or if NATO develops military infrastructure there, we will hold a gun to America's head. It has been two years since genocide and Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine started, but watching foreigners talk about it today, I feel the same frustration as I did back then. Most keep repeating how unprecedented and perplexing the unfolding massacre in Ukraine is. But everyone who really knows Russia also knows that the same has happened many times before. The scenes that you all witnessed unfolding across Ukraine on February 24, 2022 shocked the world. But Russian neighbors were shocked somewhat less. All of them can share a similar story of abuse or even several. Russian tanks rolled through Budapest in 1956, crushing the Hungarian Revolution. Prague Spring in 1968, choked by the same Moscow grip. Grozny, flattened by Russian carpet bombing in Inchkeria, Chechnya in the 90s. Zakarfelo, Georgia in 2008, sliced by Russia. And these are just a fraction of examples from less than a century of recent invasions. Well, first of all, it's important to remember that the war has been going on for 10 years now, not just two, as many in the West seem to think. That's Valeria Volshevska, Ukrainian human rights campaigner. In this podcast, voices like hers, along with others who have experienced Russian colonial rule, will be our guides. In 2014, it became clear that Putin could get away with blatant aggression, and no one seemed willing to intervene. But for Ukrainians and others who experienced centuries of Soviet colonial rule, even 2014 wasn't a new dawn. We Ukrainians carry our trauma, our memories, but also our resilience within our own family stories. It's no secret that Russia, like any other colonial empire, first tried to erase our history, our independent history, the one that proves we have our own language, identity, land and values. And of course, the history of being oppressed by them for so long. Today, they're doing it again, bombing archives, forcing our children to be re-educated under their system and imposing their curriculum. But we still have our family stories passed down through generations. That's why it wasn't a surprise to us that Russia would attempt to erase us again. In the coming episodes, we'll also be joined by indigenous experts and thinkers who study Russian colonial violence and have intimate understanding what it does. Together, we'll guide you through key myths that helped Russia deceive the world and keep its empire in the shadows, where justice, accountability, and reparations still seem far out of reach. We'll expose a larger picture by connecting the dots between separate, seemingly unrelated events. Under different regimes and rulers, Russia has used the same formula to consolidate its colonial domination in the near Russian space, gaslighting, invading, exterminating. So before we start, let's touch base on key terminology we use and why we use it. You'll hear the word colonialism a lot, but what does it mean? For a starter, I'd like you to keep in mind that according to modern-day research outside of just Western lenses, colonialism can take a lot of forms. But to make it simpler for us, let's follow four common signs that is based on consensus from the academic world. 
First one is settler colonialism. Transferring settlers to the occupied land, often based on the false notion of its historical emptiness or rightful ownership by the colonizer. This can involve physical erasure of the original population through genocide or cultural erasure through forced assimilation or identity reprogramming. Second, economic dependence. Colonies remain heavily reliant on the metropole, providing raw materials and cheap labor while being prevented from developing their own independent economies. Third, hierarchical structures. A rigid system of power based on race, ethnicity, or even economic class, positioning the colonizer as superior and the colonized as inferior. Fourth, and this is a very important one, the civilizing mission. The ideology that justifies colonial rule by claiming to quote-unquote civilize the colonized people, often through the imposition of the colonizer's culture and values. This often masks exploitative practices and ignores the richness and complexity of existing indigenous cultures. As you hear more stories and examples we share with you in this season, please keep those four signs of colonialism in mind. It will be your guiding light to recognize the empire, but also it will help you to realize that genocide in Ukraine isn't some isolated event. Everywhere you look, from the Americas to Africa to Asia, the ego of colonialism still hangs in the air. It seeps into how countries deal with each other, and it shapes people's lives in the way we might not even notice. So, if this feels familiar, ask yourself, what if a struggle of Ukrainians for freedom is much closer to your home than you originally thought? You might think, okay, we hear you, Russia has a legacy of brutal domination over the neighbors, but why is it so important to call it colonial? Why is it easy to blame Putin for recent events? A more detailed look into Russia's action requires us to consider its historical background. This is Mariam Nayem, a prominent Ukrainian researcher of decolonization and Russian colonial culture. Putting all the blame on Putin helps explain the country's wrongdoing in the last 20 years. But what about the 40, 50 or even 100 years before that? To truly understand Russia's path, we need to see it not just as something created by Putin, but as a part of a long history of Russian imperialism. Seeing Russia mainly as an empire gives us a better way to grasp the complexity of this situation. This perspective encourages us to look beyond Putin as a symptom and instead deal with the actual problem, the historical and systematic foundation of Russian imperialism. By recognizing this broader historical context, we can understand the persistent patterns of expansion, seeking influence, and geopolitical moves that go beyond a single leader's times in power. Exploring the story of Russian imperialism, we face a complex history built over decades and centuries. This method allows us to go deeper into the analysis of the root causes that have influenced Russia's crime. It could help us to create strategies that tackle the systematic issues rather than just reacting to the actions of one person. Also, it is a good explanation why it is not Putin's Russia, but Russian's Putin. Russia's unprovoked aggression against Ukraine has ripped open a gaping wound of historical injustice, exposing a reality long obscured by shadows of propaganda and mythology. Russia's relationship with its neighbors isn't just of political tension. It's rooted in a deep, abusive ideology of domination. This isn't an abstraction for hundreds of millions of people whose unlucky fate, like mine, was to be born as a Russian neighbor. Understanding Russia's past and present through the lenses of colonialism is not just a fancy intellectual exercise or a debate, it's a necessary step towards justice and accountability. It can end the cycle of repeated violence that accompanies Russia's existence. Our quest with this show is to smash this metaphorical matryoshka of lies one doll at a time. Each doll is a myth of helping Russia to present itself as a benevolent civilizer and the neighbors as hapless savages. 
Together they make a matryoshka designed to distract from the brutal realities of exploitation and avoid accountability. Ukraine's victory will deliver the major blow to this empire, but unmasking the empire's ideology and letting it crumble in our heads will finish it off. This is our journey for the episodes to follow. This show is written by Yev Kopika, produced by Elina Polyakova, mixed and sound designed by Anastasia Fedovskina and Metro Volkolinsky. Co-produced and narrated by me, Maxim Ristavi. Ukrainian voices and media face lots of censoring and gatekeeping both online and offline. Please rate and leave comments under this podcast. It will help to break through the filters to the widest audience possible. Stand with Ukraine and support the journalism of Ukrainska Pravda. Learn how at pravda.com.ua. The empire will fall.